Hello friends, this is Pastor Ben Pierce coming to you live, 301 Studios at Fuquay Verena Baptist Church. We're talking about Ahab, so today we're looking at part three of Ahab. Now I told you, he's number one with a bullet when it comes to being wicked. Uh, I don't know of any worse than him, and so uh, we talked about his Baal worship, we talked about his alliance with Ben-Hadad, we talked about him stealing Naboth's vineyard. Uh, we covered this next section we're going to talk about in Jehoshaphat's section, but we're going to go a little bit more in detail today. Uh, Ramoth Gilead belongs to, to uh, the people of Israel thought it belonged to to them, they wanted to take it back from the king of Aram. It was a piece of land. Jehoshaphat, he goes to Jehoshaphat and says, let's make an alliance. Jehoshaphat says, your people are my people. That was foolish on Jehoshaphat's part to, to, to be aligned with Ahab. He's wicked. Don't have anything to do with him. Well, Jehoshaphat thinks to himself, let's inquire of a prophet of God. And, and let's make sure that we're on the right page with this. So Ahab gathers 400 prophets together. Now, you, you take a guess. How many of those 400 prophets are prophets of God? Zero. Yeah. And he asked them all the same question. Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead or refrain? And the false prophets, they all without hesitation, go for it. The Lord's going to give it to you. Well, Jehoshaphat's smart enough to see that mm, this is not smart. Is there not a real prophet of God somewhere that we can talk to? I love what Ahab says. Ahab says, yeah, there's a prophet of God, but I hate him. <laughs> Every time he prophesies, he prophesies against me. He never says anything good. So therefore, I, I don't want anything to do with him. Isn't that the way we are sometimes when we hear the truth? We don't want to hear the truth. We always want to be hit with whatever makes us feel good. Well, the truth of the gospel sometimes doesn't make us feel good but it saves us. Need to know we're lost before we're found. But anyway, there's a prophet named Micaiah. Micaiah comes, gets in front of him, and he tells Ahab, I will tell you exactly what to do. I will tell you what God tells me to say. In other words, I'm not going to make it up. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. If God tells me this, that's what I'm going to tell you. So Micaiah goes and he stands in front of him and, and he says this. He says, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go fight and win. Well, Ahab knows He's being kind of satirical or he's just being kind of a, a, a smarty pants. He knows he's just kind of leading him up. Well, Ahab's upset and he says, tell me the truth. Well, Micaiah said, you know what? I, I, I see a vision. Israel's going to be scattered. Uh, Ahab, I told you, he never prophesies in my, in my favor. Jehoshaphat, why do we even have to bring him? Well, then Micaiah's going to have, he's had enough. He hits Ahab with a vision. He says, hey, before the throne of God, I saw a bunch of spirits. And I saw one spirit come forth and say, I'll deceive Ahab. I'll go and I'll lie through all these false prophets. Well, Ahab didn't like that. He had one of his men strike Micaiah right on the cheek. And he says, well, did the Lord tell me to do that? Well, Ahab says, take Micaiah, throw him in prison. Well, Micaiah's going to just go ahead and let him know. Tell you what. Throw me in prison, but I'm going to go ahead and let you know. You come back here, Ahab, I didn't hear from God. But here's what's going to happen. You're not going to come back. and Everybody's going to realize I was right. They go up to Ramoth Gilead. They're about to fight. And Ahab says, you know what? I'm going to wear a disguise. Jehoshaphat, you wear the kingly robes. I'm going to disguise myself like a normal soldier. Well, lo and behold, I don't know what Jehoshaphat was thinking. They start chasing him because the king wanted Ahab dead. So he said, chase after him. Well, Jehoshaphat cries out, I'm not Ahab. I'm not Ahab. And they realize he's not. And so they stop pursuing him. And do you know, a random soldier just happened to throw a random arrow, not even aiming. He just threw it. And it went right through the joint in Ahab's armor. And it killed Ahab. You see, God, God knew exactly what was going to happen. He died that day. They washed his chariot out at the pool of Samaria. And yes, the dogs licked up his blood. Remember that from part two. Just as God said it would. Jehu is going to go and kill Jezebel, throws her out the window, and he kills all of Ahab's descendants. Just like God said, your house is going to be just like Jeroboam's, just like Bashar's. You know, a couple of things we can learn from this. You got to listen to God's warning lights. When you're traveling down the road, listen to what God says and avoid those traps. And then God tells you to do something, or if God tells you something's going to happen, it will happen. God will fulfill all of his promises, and he always does what he says. 
Thank you so much for, for watching. I'll see you next week.